Here we go. Okay. I'm Judy Strayer, and as chair of the local his historic district commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 3.06 p.m. on Tuesday, um, August 9th, 2022. Meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken. Um, we'll take roll call now. Bruce Coldham. Yes, I'm here along with my grandchildren. <laughs> um, Peggy Schwartz. Greta Wilcox. Here, present. And I'm Judy Strayer and I'm here as well. Um, Karen Winter is absent. Um, so in accordance with the provision of Mass General Law Chapter 40C and Section 3.49 Local Historic Districts of the Amherst General Bylaw, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to the parties of interest. Um, based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law General Law Chapter 30A Subsection 20 signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This hearing and meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. So um, we have one um, applicant, um, Mr. Sutter. Great, so yeah, we're uh, just reviewing a it's a new fire egress at uh, 36 Triangle Street. Um, and Mr. Sutter is here as the applicant and I'm gonna ask him to unmute if possible. Um, yep. Yeah, hi, thank you so much hey. for joining us. Oh, it. wow, that's some glare. Yeah. <laughs> Change that somehow. Uh, there, I'll sit on yeah. the side of that so you can <laughs> see. It's usually just the glare off my forehead. Right. <laughs> yeah, we're um, proposing to really just reconstruct an existing uh, two sets of stairs and two landings that are on the house currently. They just don't meet current professional building standard. They're too narrow. The landings are a little small. Um, and the client would like to reconstruct what's there just in a more structurally sound and as i said current scale we'll say mm -hmm. um great i can uh bring up pictures of the existing here um as you can see it's let me just here's kind of like the top section from the i guess this goes from the third floor down to the second floor and there's a landing here which is really the roof of the porch as well it is yeah um and then here's kind of the full light of stairs yep so what we're proposing is increasing from two stair stringers to three stair stringers as is currently um a the professional standard for constructing stairs like that um and increasing the landing size at the bottom by I want to say it's roughly 16 inches in each direction just to afford the similarly the code approved amount of space for a landing. Uh, mostly they just wanted to clean them up and update them. Replace the railings. We're going to get rid of the black cheap railings and put in wood current standard railings. Um, I guess that's most of what I've got. What questions would you guys have for me? And I can show the, uh, you also shared with us um, the PDF of the proposed perspective. Construction drawing of it. Can you, I don't know the term stringers. Can you just explain what oh, that yeah, means? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I wish I had a cursor to. Yeah, they're evident in the stair there now. You can see them. So the kind of sawtooth things on the stairs. Yeah. Right. Yep. That thing. So you'll notice the current uh, arrangement only has two of them. That uh, makes for less stable and strong stairs. Uh, you won't see two stringer stairs built really anywhere nowadays. Uh, it's just insufficient. Similarly, um, the footings, for instance, the concrete footings are really small. They'd never meet current standard for load. Uh, 
In fact, now they have to be, you can see if you scroll down a little farther for everyone, we've got them with the, they have flared bases now to carry loads. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that just was not built originally to what is current code. Mm -hmm. And uh, while they are using it as a single family, um, they'd like to retain the stairs. And I generally, I agree with people, you know, when they don't want to remove a fire regress, you know, that's usually most people agree with fire safety being a priority. Um, I think noting, noticing here, I'm looking at the drawings, there also are insufficient railing for putting a railing on each side of both stairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll say it too, just for a little historical information, it's a um, it's an old house, 1903. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see anything about you know uh, the fire egress when that was built or or what no. role role that played. It seemed like a more modern fire safety. It is. Addition. Yeah. At some point, there was an addition put on the rear of the house that includes a new, uh, larger open floor plan kitchen and right. uh, master bath it would be the garage you if you if one could scan left one can't in that image it's right, right the left one. yeah um i think this was all part of a similar renting an attic room doing some sort of arrangement in i'm going to say probably the 80s judging by the construction of the stairs mm -hmm. in an era when there was less um stringent scrutiny of the construction um, that was the era of uh, Chet Penzer as the building inspector, and he was one of the most uh, pedantic uh, uh, officials, I think, that ever existed. Oh, certainly. But deck codes were much more loose. In fact, until really only last probably five or six years have codes for decks and landings and things like that, exterior like that on residential locations really gained any flesh, which is one of the reasons why you can see people's decks and landings are all over the place, you know. But anyway, I digress. Chris? Couple of questions. Uh, um, the, the, the wood railings, uh, the handrails and balustrading yeah, on both sides or a hand railing on one side, a balustrade on the outside, is that the intention? Yes, yes. Handrail and, against the wall, balustrade on the exterior side. And uh, do we understand that these would be painted as opposed to being yes. pressure treated and left? Mm -hmm. Okay, Th that's pretty much all uh, I have, I think. Uh, it seems to me as has been represented a, uh, a very sound and intelligent thing to do and to maintain. It's already there and we're talking about something that is improving what's there without widening it it's making it a little bit bigger but there are very sound reasons for making it a little bit bigger so um i'm uh, i don't think i have any further questions i'm happy with what's proposed and would, would the painting um would the steps be painted would they be a finished wood? how would what would be the look of the steps um, so the, I'll go a little more into detail about the materials. Um, the, the code on these is that you have to use something that is water resistant. Generally, uh, we use a uh, ground contact rated lumber, pressure treated, as people call it, though it's not pressure treated per se anymore. Um, the client would like us to stain all of it as it is currently with a white stain, uh, again, to match the existing appearance. As I said, they really just want, the, some of the treads were getting a little soft. It's visibly deficient. They probably wouldn't enlarge it really even significantly if it weren't for really my insistence that it should meet current code and a, a couple of locations where it bottlenecks down. But other than that, yeah, um, it will look nearly identical to what's there. Uh, same stain colors. We'll probably wait a few months before we stain it just to let it dry out because pressure treated wood can be very damp. It starts its life very damp. As you know, as we saw this morning, it's right um, directly across the street. There's Absolutely. Front door view. And I mm -hmm. it sounds 
sounds like you've, you've designed it such that it looked very much like what we see now. Absolutely. Uh, better, cleaner. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions or thoughts? This may go down as one of the shortest meetings. Yeah, I guess I guess I would just add, James, if um, if there's any other exterior work that you're doing that you think might be um, visible from the street, just to make sure that uh, that we're approving everything. Absolutely. Uh, all if you guys. Once, but. If you could see the inside of the bathroom, I'd ask you for <laughs> approval of that one too. Yeah. <laughs> that just gets a regular building permit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No, that's it. I actually, as I was saying this morning when uh, when I was talking to you uh, out in the street, the uh, I live in a, a local historic district in Holyoke. So uh, oh, I get it. And, and sat on the commission. So oh. I, uh, I'm familiar with the whole process. Nice. <laughs> Great. Any suggestions for us as a local, as a previous member of a local historical district? Yeah, yours is somewhat smaller than ours. Ours has, I want to say, 85 homes. It's a one street. It's a Fairfield Ave in Holyoke. Um, a beautiful area. Oh, it is. And the street was laid out. The original um, lot lines were, and center islands and everything were laid out by uh, Frederick Law Olmsted. So it looks pretty nice. sweet. The biggest thing that I've found as a resident is that people would just like access to resources. You know, they have antique homes. They'd like to fix them. Most of them bought antique homes because they like antique homes. Um, and I'm constantly talking to neighbors about where to get materials, where, and we live in a great area where you can get all make and manner of things. We're in a very, uh, like a high Victorian street and you can't buy these moldings anymore. You can't buy the trim, you can't buy right. the shingles, and half of it's just finding some weird manufacturer or mill that can cut you a specific profile, because they're all bigger than anything you buy now. So, mm -hmm. But that's my only, that'd be my advice. Yeah. How it's long have you guys been in existence as a district? It's not very long. Uh, I think I ours, maybe. How long did you say, Judy? Maybe, maybe uh, think, five, five or six years, maybe. I think we're on 12 or 15, something like that. Yeah. So I do know that after we got past the initial uh, pushback from some of the neighbors, everyone seemed to be very um, respondent and invested in the, the long term outcome because it does really improve and retain the character of a neighborhood. When you've got a great area, you want to try to encourage and encapsulate that as much as you can right i noticed that real estate agents now put that on their advertisements mm -hmm. yeah i noticed that too I've, and we I've, have we did have pushback initially so mm -hmm. for certain yeah, areas. people i find people are a little intimidated by the concept of uh an extra level of investigation we'll say um but i've I know that we were never particularly aggressive or confrontational. We just wanted people to like not tear porches off houses, things like that, you know, whenever you can retain original details. And yeah, as you said, I think it, 20 years ago, saying something was in a historic district might have been, um, might have seemed derogatory. Uh, mm -hmm. A realtor might not have wanted to represent that immediately to a buyer, thinking that it was a negative, where now it's viewed as a, an item of cachet for a neighborhood. So. As an aside, we, we've removed some of this has nothing to do with, let's finish up what we're talking about. Then I have <laughs> for, uh, against a question. Um, all right, are there any other uh, questions or comments about this specific project? I guess we uh, could ask for public comment on the do we have public comment? Matt, uh, doesn't look like any commenters. I think we're all set. Well, in that case, uh, I guess I would move to close the public hearing. Is that the next step? I think it is. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. A second. Somebody want a second? <laughs> second, second. Um, um, so do we need to make a motion to approve the certificate? 
I think we need to vote, don't Correct. we? Correct. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. So um, we, uh, we'll take roll call to approve. Um, Aye. Schwartz. Approve. Uh, Greta. Approve. Fox. Approve. Uh, and Judy, I'm Judy Stewart, and I approve also. So um, we will issue the ticket. Um, well, I, I, I'll make a motion to uh, grant a certificate of appropriateness for the uh, uh, applicant for the front uh, applicant at um, uh, seventy four is it Triangle Street? Uh, uh, thirty at, thirty six. Thirty six at the address Triangle Street um, uh, for the uh, res resurrection of the uh, existing uh, escape stair, according to the. Uh, or finding it's consistent with sections eight point whatever and eight point whatever, uh, and 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 uh, and consistent with the uh, standards of uh, the uh, uh, Dickinson Historical District. Uh, um, no conditions uh, other than that it uh, is consistent with the uh, documents submitted. That's the motion. Second. I'll second the motion. Oops, I'm on mute. Now, do we vote on the motion? Yes. Yes, and this is discussion, but we probably had that. Okay. Uh, so if we're voting on the motion, we'll vote um, Bruce Coldham. I approve. Peggy Schwartz. Approve. Rita Wilcox. I approve. Judy Strayer and I approve. Thank you, James, and thank you for your um, uh, extra official, ex officio uh, contribution. My pleasure. I'd like you to stay up for a minute. Please. The question about the corner of Leslie and Triangle. This is not start. Very quick, there's a, there's a bush and you've done some further plantings, and it's going to get harder and harder to make that look. Visibility around that corner. I, yeah. I brought your point up with the homeowner. Uh, I, that's about the most, I'm in a, I could say, an awkward position trying to complete my work without pushing them too far on their landscaping or lack thereof. Uh -huh. uh, I'm a like mow my lawn every five days, trim the shrubs four times a year kind of guy. So it's all a little different from my yard. But I have brought up the point with them. Um, I think your best bet though is with the DPW or somebody like that because clearance, vis uh, visibility and clearance on roadways is their bailiwick. So, uh, okay, then I- Or the Board of Health. Not that you're a neighbor. I mean, you don't want to go to the Board of Health about your neighbor, but. You know. I really don't. And, uh, I'll bring it up with them again for what that's worth. I'm wondering if Nate should, Nate should bring it up as a historic district, something, or I mean, it's not really. I, yeah, it's a general housekeeping item, really. Yeah. It's nothing but historical. Huh. Mm. The zoning commissioner is probably the person, which is to say, Rob Morrow. So, who, who would bring that to the zoning commission? Oh, as oh, a, yeah. As a yeah, I mean, I guess it's like a clear, clear sight issue, it sounds like. So that, that could be a, a zoning or or matter, I guess. But um yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. I think I think uh James is right that it would be a DPW Department of Public Works matter. So you can email the uh the DPW department. I should email a DPW because it's what, what is his name? He's, um, he's been here forever. I can't it up. Mooring. Say again? Yeah, they, they just have a generic email you can uh, send to public works at Amherst MA. So, but anyway, um, well, thanks. Thanks, James, for coming. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, move the building permit along and, and then also get you the certificate of appropriateness for the local historic district. Wonderful. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you guys have a great day. Thank Thanks, James. Take care. Bye bye. Great. Thanks, everyone. Um, we did have one more agenda item, which was just uh, I didn't I don't know if folks have given any more thought to whether we wanted to um, submit like a CPA application for uh, hi hiring someone to look into the um, district oh, yeah. enlargement study. Um, but that's, uh, I guess that would be due um, September 30th. So we've got kind of the end of next month. So we have some time, but um, I put that on the agenda for today just in case folks wanted to discuss that idea any further. Is the application available yet? No, it's they're released on September 1st. Okay. Um, I think it would probably be helpful to get a quote or like a cost estimate. I think I was thinking that might be the first step is to reach out to some potential people, people who do that kind of work and get a sense of the cost. Yes, I think you'd have to know what you are asking for and to be able to defend that uh, that uh, that request based on yeah. a certain uh, certainty as to that it's enough uh, or that it's not too much. Um. I guess one thing I would ask is we're kind of just going forward with this along the same lines of what was requested from the, the historic commission, the, the, you know, that the, that section of North Pleasant Street. Um, right. Um, and as it's kind of grown into something to go for fun is, is you know, I guess, is that the extent of what we want it to be? Um, Good question. Are you thinking of going a little bigger? Oh, I don't. I don't know. That's. What, I mean, I'm just thinking. We've never actually, and I don't know how we can do this. I mean, we've never actually sat down as a commission and kind of talked about our. Yeah. You know, talked about our goals and like where we would see expansion in town and that type of thing. Yeah. And 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 ranking them because. Right now, that's kind of the highest one because that's the one that's been brought to us. Mm -hmm. So, and it may be, but just um, I'm just wondering if that's the right way to go about it without looking at other neighborhoods in town or, Good in idea. Us, you know. Yeah, and that almost ties into the larger uh, preservation plan effort, which is, well, I'm sure that'll include a exploration of you know, different, you know, certainly the national register districts, but then exploring the idea of like whether there's any areas that should be considered for local historic districts. Um, so that might be actually accomplished in the next, um, you know, coming months even, or, or the, the net with by the early 2023 um, as part of that process. Um, but no, I, I guess I, I would agree with you, Judy, as well, that um, it's definitely worth. It's a good opportunity. Yeah, thinking about town-wide. Yeah, so how do we want to, I mean, but I don't want to miss the opportunity if we need to apply by the end of September, because that's the only one during the year you can apply, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if there's a little dirt road at the bottom of Lesson Street, I think the road turns toward the police station if you're going down the hill. There's a little road to the right that just uh, houses two large white houses that have been used with the, as student rentals. Those, it's a, right now it's been dug up and it's being repaid. And it just perplexed us. That there are a couple of major potholes. It's hard. I'm having trouble hearing you, Peggy. I can hear everybody else really clearly, but I can't understand what you're saying. Oh, I I'm have the so same sorry. problem. Oh dear, it's closer. Does that help? Can you hear me better? better? A little bit better, yeah. 
huh? Because it's it is said hi. Hmm. Um, there's a street down at the, the corner of Lexington Street. I'm just perplexed as to how the town has come has made some decisions, and I don't know who to even go to. They're repaving the road that fronts those two houses that are student rentals, even though there are some major potholes on Lexington Street itself. That would seem to me to be a much higher priority for repair, given the amount of traffic, and especially that the, the police traffic that comes up Lessie when connecting to um, the university neighborhood. It's always up Lessie, or you often up Lessie Street. Anyway, I don't know if, it, if something like that falls within our, our purview, the, the historic district, the, the um, scheduling of things, the, 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 the to the Community itself, and not 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 confined to housing and renovation and repair. Is that an, would it be something that we should be commenting on, or um, trying through this through our group to get some agency? Right. Sorry, I also have trouble. I didn't quite get everything Peggy was saying. Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Huh. Well, there's a there's a small Bruce, street. you're muted. I'm muted? No, Bruce is muted. Yeah. Yeah, I just, so I don't, I think the, the purview of the local historic district really is on architectural changes and, and, and buildings. Um, I mean, we could advocate for better maintenance of roads being a historic district, but it's not like a, there's no like regulatory power or, or special <laughs> significance to know, uh, given to the historic districts. Um, I mean, you might consider contacting your town council member. They might have insight into mm -hmm. kind of how things are prioritized and, and what um, repairs are being made. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any follow up? Yeah. Okay. You know, we've got a huge pot to drive in a pothole to drive up yeah. Be careful. <laughs> Um, Peggy, I think that the sound uh, uh, system on your computer or whatever you're using is uh, is somehow muffled or needs, uh, I wonder whether you might not try plugging in something like this that uh, would uh, perhaps improve uh, the, the, the quality of your, uh, of your broadcast. <laughs> oh, right, right now. Want to try that now? Shall I try that? Um, I'll just, well, I'll, I'll I've it. noticed this uh, repeatedly from one meeting to the next. So I, I think that it would be if you could. If, I, I think it's important that we can hear you, and it's okay. it's it's very difficult. Um, so I think that some, if you could figure out how to improve your sound quality, I think it would make a big difference uh, oh, to, to our, our our ability to respond to what you're saying. Thank you for letting me know. Well, I'm using my iPad. I do have a computer. I don't use it that much anymore. I was on the iPad. Oh, then uh, plugging Pardon? in uh, the earbuds would probably, with the little microphone, wherever it is, uh, would probably uh, make a big difference. Uh-huh. Well, I'll try, I'll try using the computer next time for me and see if that makes a difference. Thank you for alerting me. Yeah. Um, all right, and then uh, I guess I just wanted to make sure we scheduled our September meeting. I don't know if I have that in my calendar yet. Uh, I don't. I don't know of any pending applications, but um, might just be good to have something on the books. Um, Could do. We have. Yeah, September 5th is Labor Day. That's a Monday. Yes, um, yes. We could do the 12th, potentially. The 12th would suit me best. Would I think. Work for me. I'm out of town till the 10th, so. There's, I'm, well, it's, I'm not sure I would be going. There's a uh, an Amherst Neighbors open party type thing at the Mill River Pavilion 
in the afternoon from three to six. I don't know if any of you, would, especially those with families, might want to be attending attending something like that. It's to kind of get get the full season rolling in Amherst type picnic. So I don't know if that if that would affects anybody here who would want to attend that or people who might want to apply with a right. change. So that's your that's your call, I guess, Ben. Um, well, if we held it at three, I mean, I guess it would still give people an opportunity to attend. You said it, it goes until six, maybe. Um, we read it again. But um, was anyone else planning to attend that? I didn't hear what the. Uh, I think it was, was. The, it was the Am Amherst Neighbors was having an event at Mill River okay. Okay. on that day. I don't think so. There's a there's a donor picnic the day before. I'll probably at Mill right. River. I'm sure I'll probably go to that. That'll be my neighborhood uh, commitment yeah. of the week. <laughs> um. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. So we'll have our meeting on the twelfth. Sure. Okay. Say again. I think Bruce just said it work, works for him. So I think, yeah, let's let's go with that date then, September 12th. Okay. All right, yeah, that was a straightforward application. I like those. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. nice that he's on a historical board, so he- Yeah. He was good. Yeah, yeah that was good insight, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to say, I, as far as the, uh, the, the CPA application uh, for consultant support for the consideration of expansion of the historic district, I thought that we were waiting for, the, I think each of you or um, uh, those of you on the subcommittee were, were creating uh, um, Form Bs for the, or, or Form B-ish uh, uh, drafts for the for the various properties and and my my understanding was we've been waiting for that to, those drafts to be completed before we as a commission have uh, deliberated so someone said we haven't really done much so far and i think as a commission and i think that's true because i thought we were waiting for the uh, uh for the for the for the reports on the various properties that were in I the considered that, expansion oh i think that almost everyone is done and has put them on, except me, because my computer, I'm getting a new computer and it's left click is, and Peggy, that might be a good place to ask about your sound quality is left click. They're taking my old computer and moving everything to my new computer and I get it tomorrow. So oh, okay. then I will turn mine in. Well, I, 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 yeah, I have not. Um, I have research and I have the foreign bees um, and the stuff that I've, I've located, but other than that, um, I haven't put it into any narratives, form of writing. Um, and I don't know if that's going to happen from me, Frank, in the next couple of weeks. Um, but... <laughs> Well, if we're going to be considering uh, a scope of work for a consultant, uh, it's going to be difficult uh, for us as a commission to do that unless we've got uh, some basic data on the properties we're considering. Isn't that true, or am I am I missing something here? I, I well, uh, first of all, Karen is the chair of the yeah not here to oh okay so she's yeah okay I, I I'm not the the committee and the and I and to just the only reason I even picked up this work was because Jennifer had taken it on and had not gotten to any of it. Yeah. Um, you know, so, it's it's not in terms of you know I'm not sure how like I don't understand what the process is. It seems a lot more complex than any of us um, have time for right now. Um, 
So I don't know, I don't know what to say about moving forward with it. And also it was presented to us by the historic, the historical committee. They were the yeah. ones who selected the properties and said, yeah. we want you to look at this. So yes. And we've we've got two new people about to join, so uh, it it feels to me as though we're not going to be ready to make an application, you know, a defensible application to the uh, CPA. Well, let's check. Uh, unless Karen, unless Karen's got it all thought out, in which case it only takes know. one person. Only takes one person to do this, to you know, to have it in their head to be able to get up. But it does take at least one person. Who's going to appear? You know, who's going to stand up before the CPA committee and make the case? And if we don't have one of us who's prepared to stand and make the case, then it was not worth. We shouldn't make an application. That I, I know, <laughs> because I've been, I made the case many times, even though many of the people on my, uh, my NACF board wouldn't necessarily be able to do it. One of us could, and one of us did, and we were consistently successful. That's all it takes. One person who's got it figured out, who can make the case. And you've done it before, so maybe Karen could check with you if she has problems. But I, I think she's been working on it, that's what I think. Yeah. I, can, I can talk about the process for, for, for applying to uh, CPA. I know a fair bit about that, unless it's changed, and I don't think it would have. Uh, so that the, the context of, of application, yes, I can be helpful. Okay. I'm, you know, the only, I mean, the only reason I even brought up going to a consultant a few months ago is because we don't see him, we don't seem to have time to do it as, right, right, to get as a commission. Questions. Yeah. That makes sense. And they had originally hired a consultant, which was really, right. Successful. You know, and frankly, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's something that I think deserves one. And, I guess for me, I've never, because I've never done this before, applied for it. I, I don't see the reasoning in doing research on things that aren't necessarily, you know, uh, don't necessarily have form Bs. Like there are some houses there that aren't part of the database. Okay. So I don't, to me, it seems like a waste of time to try to justify those yeah. being historical if they're not. Good point. So, um, Okay, well, maybe next time we can try to create a scope of work for a consultant. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I, in, the, I, in the meantime, I can reach out to Karen and just see what yeah. where, what she's thinking about, about this. And, and I then, saw Karen this morning as she was driving to the doctors. Yeah. Really bad sore throat. Uh, Had not tested positive for COVID yet, but. Isn't that, that's one of the symptoms. That's what the I new New one, yeah. Oh man. Anyway, sorry, but okay. I hope she has everything she needs and is fine. Yeah. But I think you should reach out to her. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll do that, and then I guess I'll uh, keep everyone in the loop. Yeah, and I can what I have. Okay. Um. Good. All right. Are were there any other? Uh, uh, announcements or uh, unanticipated items? Not for me. Not for me. All righty. Cool. Well, I guess we can uh, adjourn then. Okay. M move to adjourn. And as in my world, uh, seconding the move in close, uh, clicking the red button. <laughs> <laughs> so All I right. will see you next time. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody.